Everything began underwater. Millions of years ago, green algae generated one of the first species of bryophytes. Little by little, the bryophytes started to leave the water, and they were amongst the first plants to colonize dry land. Today, the bryophytes are still very fond of humidity. Even if many of them can resist long periods of drought, they never miss an opportunity to drink water. It is said that one kilo of dry bryophytes can retain 15 litres of water. The bryophytes don't have any roots or veins. Simple rhizoids allow them to attach onto numerous substrates such as soil, stone or wood. They take advantage of ambient humidity to absorb through all their substance, water and nutrients. Fertilised by the male cells, the female bryophyte cells develop long stems, at the end of which appear spore capsules. When these spore capsules open, they free spores the size of a few microns, which give birth to new plants. Carried by the wind, these spores can cross oceans, and thereby new unknown species can colonise a continent. The 26,000 known species of bryophytes can be classified into four main groups. The anthocerotes, liverworts, peat mosses and mosses in the strict sense of the word. Bryophytes have adapted reproductively to terrestrial environments by evolving two structures that prevent their eggs and sperm from drying out. The archegonia, in which eggs are fertilized and developed, and the antheridia, in which sperm are formed. Depending on the species, a given gametophyte plant may have either an archegonia, an antheridia, or both. In all bryophytes, sperm swim to the egg through a film of water, led by chemical attractants emitted by the egg. As the sperm of bryophytes must travel through at least a film of water to reach the egg, Bryophytes living in dry climates must time their reproductive activity to coincide with rainy periods. Like their algae ancestors, bryophyte life cycles alternate between diploid and haploid generations. The haploid generation of mosses often consists of huge numbers of green gametophyte plants that look like tiny evergreens with the archegonia and antheridium sitting near the top. In liverworts, the gametophyte generation often looks like a small green leaf attached to the ground, out of which rise structures that look like little green umbrellas. These are the archegonia and antheridium. As gametophyte plants are haploid, sperm and eggs are created by mitosis. After the sperm fertilizes the egg in the archegonia, the resulting zygote remains in the archegonia. In mosses, it develops into a long, stalked diploid sporophyte that rises directly out of the archegonia. The sporophyte is topped by a capsule in which haploid spores are produced by meiosis. The capsule eventually breaks open and the haploid spores are dispersed by wind and eventually germinate if they land in a suitable environment, producing a tangled moss of green filaments called a protonema. Moss protonema looks remarkably like filamentous green algae, suggesting in part an evolutionary link between mosses and green algae. As protonema grows, it forms rhizoids that attach to the ground and shoots that grow upward into gametophyte plants that continue the life cycle. Their small and compact form enables the stems to stay upright, while rhizoids anchor them to the soil. Moisture easily accumulates around the densely spaced stems. This often leaves a film of water on the leaves and on the stem tip. Hair-like growths called paraphyses help to hold the water around the stem tips.
Some stem tips are male and contain reproductive structures called antheridia. These are complex organs consisting of many cells. Each is supported by a stalk. The upper portion consists of an outer protective jacket that surrounds a group of sperm cells. At the tip of a female plant, there are numerous reproductive structures known as archegonia. The top of each consists of a slender neck. The middle region contains a chamber called the venta. The base of the archegonium is attached to the moss stem by a stalk. An egg cell is formed inside the venta. Inside the neck, the breakdown of cells forms a central canal containing sperm attractant. A rain shower provides the ideal conditions for sperm release and their transfer to a female plant. Droplets of rainwater collect at the tips of the moss stems. Inside the drop of water at the tip of the male stem, the antheridia open. This releases cells containing sperm, which float up to the surface. Raindrops splash some of this water out of the male plant. Some splash drops contain sperm cells and fall onto the tip of a female stem. The sperm now escape from their surrounding membrane and use their flagella to move about in search of an egg. The archegonium now opens and releases a sperm attractant. The sperm swim towards the source of the attractant and into the opening. Once inside, they are guided down to the egg. The first sperm to arrive enters the egg cell. Fertilization is completed with a sperm and egg nuclei fuse, creating a diploid zygote. After fertilization, many changes take place on the female stem tip. At first, the zygote remains within the venter, where it forms an embryo. However, one end of the embryo soon grows out of the venta and into the female stem. This allows it to obtain water and nutrients from the female plant. The other end of the embryo grows upward. The venta expands to accommodate this growth, but eventually it is split in half. The embryo now forms a very long stalk or seta that lifts the top half of the venter up into the air. This results in a small diploid plant, the sporophyte, attached to the tip of the female stem. These female stems have all been fertilized and support sporophytes above them. The tip of each is covered by the torn venta, or calyptera. This soon falls away, exposing a capsule, or sporangium. The capsule contains fertile tissue consisting of sporocytes.
Inside the nucleus of each sporocyte, there are two sets of chromosomes. The nucleus divides by the process of meiosis, forming four haploid nuclei. Thin walls now form around each nucleus, resulting in a cluster of four cells, known as the tetrad. A deposit of sporopollenin produces cells with thick, resistant walls, called spores. As the spores are forming, the capsule dries out and hardens. Soon the lid or operculum falls away, revealing a ring of fine teeth called the peristome. These surround an opening in the capsule. As they dry out, they bend backwards, allowing the spores to escape. A light breeze is all it takes to carry the spores away from the parent plant.